Hey, what's going on, good people? Welcome to Breast Care Fly. Time to get this. So I thought I would do this video a little differently. Um, you know, I'm always experimenting with different ways to present the material. And so in this, I thought I would do kind of like a talk through um, of the video. Um, and so, yeah, tell, let me know what you think down in the comments, whether or not you'd like this or not. I will say that I feel weird just kind of talking through the video rather than, you know, actually letting the cockpit audio speak for itself but I thought I would give this a shot. The first thing I wanna say is you will see this information popping up on the screen. I decided to start putting this up after a young lady who bright star um, had everything going for her decided to take her own life. And I just wanted to provide that information to anybody who thought that, you know, things were a little, you know, bleak and that there wasn't any hope and I just wanted to give that information just in case you know it would help um, I, I never want folks to ever think that there's no hope um, and I know that that information and that organization does well so if you feel that you need someone to talk to please go back to that information you can text or call um, help is available so as you can see here, I'm doing my favorite thing to do, not, <laughs> but I'm actually back taxiing to take off on runway 36. Um, and you know, I tell you, I just, I really don't like back taxiing. It just feels like, you know, you're on the active, you're like uber vulnerable and it just, it just feels uncomfortable. And I know, you know, I'm watching final, I'm listening for any traffic, but it's just, my nerves just feel like completely on edge as I'm back taxiing down the runway. Um, but I will tell you, once I get to, you know, uh, this point where I'm pulling up to the end of the runway and I'm about to turn, it feels even scarier because now my back is, you know, towards the, you know, the incoming traffic. So definitely an interesting thing to do to back taxi. So, and I am, you know, you can see I back taxied all the way down to the end and now I am lined up to get ready to take off. And, you know, I wanted to use all the runway possible. All right, so as I begin to my takeoff roll, for all of my non-pilot peeps, you may always hear me say, heels to the floor, full power. Why do I do that? Well, the reason is the rudder pedals are used at my feet to steer the airplane, so that's how I made the turn. At the top of the rudder pedals are the brakes. And so the one thing that you don't want to do while you're on your takeoff roll is to have your feet on the brakes. So if you bring your heels to the floor, your toes are on the middle of the rudder pedal so you can get rudder input, but you most, most likely won't hit the brakes. And so that's why I do that. You also hear me say oil temp, oil pressure, suction, all of those types of things. Those are all of the primary flight instruments that are very key to a good takeoff. Also, you will hear something called airspeed alive. What is that? What that means is on the airspeed indicator, it begins to give an indication that you're picking up speed and you are getting to the point where you will start seeing your rotation speed or the speed in which you can take off. So that's what happens during that whole takeoff sequence, believe it or not. Okay, so I've now taken off and I am beginning to make my last call and beginning to turn outside of the pattern. Um, and so there's a few things happening on this sequence of the flight. Um, so I'm climbing out, I'm trying to get to altitude, and I am leaving the traffic pattern. And so a lot of times you'll hear me say, I'm making a left-hand crosswind turn or a right-hand crosswind turn or going straight out, but this is my last call. What that lets everybody in the, in the area know, especially if they're coming to that airport, is that I am no longer in the traffic pattern and I am leaving that area. And so that's why you hear that. The other thing that's happening 
is I'm going through my climb checklist so you can see I'm pulling my checklist out here there's a sequence of things that I have to do I'm checking oil temp I'm checking oil pressure checking making sure that I'm climbing out nicely I'm also looking at um, a few other items like my taxi landing light can now come off and if I need to do anything with the um, throttle which I usually don't I keep it full and some people you know when they're taking off in certain aircraft they have um, propellers that are not fixed pitch so sometimes they'll just adjust the propeller but mine is fixed pitch so I don't have to do that so that's what's going on at this sequence of flights still kind of busy um, but it's mostly about a few checklist items and reaching altitude okay so this is when I'm at my cruise phase of flight and you'll probably notice this is when I start pointing stuff out for you guys like lakes rivers streams mountains that kind of thing and but the most important thing is really I get dialed in first I make sure I pull my RPMs back to where they need to be I you know make sure I lean the engine out uh, to lean the mixture make sure we're good and this is actually also the time when I start yakking at you guys you know whatever you know the spirit moves me to say um, but this is you know I think when you know when I'm just you know in that zone and just can't believe that I get to do this thing called flying an airplane and I get to I get to be an aviator and I've been blessed with the opportunity to be a pilot and I think I just talk a lot during this phase of flight just because I don't have as much to do in the cockpit but I'm just in awe of the fact that the good Lord saw fit to allow me to be a pilot and I just I just savor this time okay so this is the part of the video that the you know the title is all about so you can see I'm pointing out there we're definitely you know getting closer to the Delaware water gap and you know it's interesting every time I fly I always wonder what do I really want to make as the subject of my video and this one was definitely about the Delaware water gap now I've flown over it before but I've never actually been deliberate about, hey, when I fly, I am going to actually fly through the gap in the mountains where the Delaware River flows through. And so that's what I'm, you know, heading towards now. So you saw me reaching and pointing and that kind of stuff. So that's what we're doing. And again, sometimes I'm just in the cockpit and it comes to me what I want to talk about or what the flight is all about and sometimes it's completely different from you know what I wanted to talk about and originally so yeah it's a it's an interesting process for sure so the reason why I really wanted to feature this amazing geographic feature is because I think it's just amazing and I never want to take for granted flying over this you know this area the Delaware water gap again is what you see down there is the Delaware River basically you know have, having cut a path through the mountains and just think about all of the thousands of years that it took for the river to to create this feature and you know these are the types of things where as I'm flying in the airplane and I get to see this these are the the memories that I will always have fresh in my mind the things that you know the good Lord has allowed me to see as I fly in these small aircraft and these are all the things that I'm hoping that I get to share with folks when I'm flying you know with them and so that's why I wanted to really focus on this feature. I think it's just absolutely amazing. There is just so many amazing things that we get to see. And sometimes we just don't take the time to appreciate them. So 
Delaware Water Gap hats off. I wanted to take the time to appreciate this amazing, amazing natural feature. Now, every now and then, something will come up and it'll just be something random. So here you'll see that, you know, for whatever reason, there was like this little bit of smoke. And as I noticed it, I started flying towards it. And I'm still not sure if it was like a little fire or if somebody was just burning twigs or something like that. But, you know, sometimes there's just these weird little situations that pop up that make the flight kind of interesting. So it's usually about this time in the flight when I begin to look at like geographic features on the ground just to kind of get my bearing to see where I am. Um, and then the other thing that I begin to do is see how far away I am from my target airport. About 15 nautical miles out, I begin to think about, okay, calling the tower, uh, what runway they're going to give me. About 15 to 20 nautical miles out, I'm getting the weather so I can have an understanding of what I need to, uh, to do in terms of reporting uh, what what the weather is, you know, on the field and reporting and tell that I do know what that weather is. So that's what you kind of see me doing here. Um, and, you know, just really beginning to look, you know, for where I am, trying to project myself out in space um, and get ready to figure out um, how I'm going to come in, what runway I'm going to be on, all of that good stuff. Um, and this is where the workload begins to increase pretty drastically. So the one thing I love about flying into the Northeast Philadelphia airport is that there are great visual cues. As you look out the front here, you see the Delaware River. Um, I know that I am now on a right downwind for a runway 33. Um, and as I make my turn to go right base, um, it's really easy. And I can basically just put my wing on the, the river and you know, basically fly parallel to the river. The thing that I absolutely love too is, as you can see, you know, I'm now getting ready to turn final. Is I can really see on that base the final turn in the Piper Archer, the you know the runway so much easier. It was definitely a lot more difficult in the Cessna, but you know this makes life you know so much easier. So you know, so this is the phase of flight where I'm really just trying to be dialed in. I want to do the best landing I can. Um, and the fact that there is a happy or precision altitude, something, something P, I forget what the PI stands for. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, it really helps guide me in. So that's the advantage of flying into Northeast Philadelphia airport. Um, I will say that, you know, as you've seen, I've had my taxi issues, but yeah, I mean, I, it, it's still all of this, this visual cue stuff really helps. And now I'm on final and this is where I would use the cue to music, but you know, I'm going to go ahead and bring it on in for a landing. Now, one of the things that I will say to my non-pilot um, people, even after you land, taxiing is just as important as landing. So I really focus on, you know, trying to put the airplane down on the runway nice and smoothly. But I also want to make sure that, you know, I, I know how to taxi, that I've brought the flaps up um, and all of the other stuff that I need to do. So as I bring the plane on in, you know, I'm trying to make sure that I got a good descent rate, bring it on down and make contact and this was a pretty decent landing as well so but now as you see i am still flying the airplane so even though i'm on the ground taxiing is just as important got it this time baby got it this time what look at that right away. what <laughs> all right so listen i'm tripping oh uh, so i gotta get out of here there's another person coming at five o'clock got plenty of time but so thank you for flying with me this was a brilliant brilliant flight um everything came together nicely uh, definitely definitely nice people thank you for flying with me russ kid russ can fly 
Come on, 76 Mike. We got work to do, baby. All right. Thank you for following. Yeah.